Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. These words are very special words in the life of the church at large, aren't they? I mean, they are significant words. They are powerful words, which is often why these are words we use for special events in the life of the church, like a a mission Sunday or an outreach weekend or even something like today with Lutheran Schools Week. We try to preserve it for those special moments, those, those special times in the life of the church. Now, the only issue with that is that oftentimes, then, these words seem like they can only be used in those special moments, as if the the Mission Sunday or the Outreach Weekend or the Lutheran Schools Week is the only time these words apply. But the reality is, these words, they are for Mondays. And Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, rinse and repeat over and over again because these are the days of the week that this world lives in sin and brokenness. These are the days of the week where the world needs to hear about Jesus. And frankly, that world, it really hasn't changed much from from Paul's time in Acts chapter 17. If you look to the screen, there you'll see some text from Acts chapter 17. I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to explain why I believe not much has changed in that time. It says, So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Now, it's hard not to see Paul as being sarcastic here, right? As if he's saying, I see you are very religious, so much so you even have an altar to the unknown God. Great job, guys. Really religious, right? But he's being serious here. He is being very sincere because the people of Athens were a religious people. And that altar to the unknown God is very much a a testament to how religious they actually are. But you know, when we look at that, and we see just how religious the people of Athens are, it's hard for us to believe that then not much has changed to our world today. Because on one hand, we have the people of Athens, very religious. But then on the other hand, we have us today, where according to a recent study in September of 2022, nearly 30% of Americans check none or no religious affiliation when those questions are asked of them. So how can we really say that that not much has changed if we've got this on one side and we've got this on the other side? Well, it all comes back to that altar to the unknown God, specifically the reason why that altar exists. It doesn't exist just to cover their basis or or make sure they didn't forget about a God or, or somebody. It's there because of fear and doubt, and uncertainty. Things that exist because of the unknown. Things that very much existed in the lives of the people in Paul's time. Things that still very much exist in our world today. I mean, just stop and think about it for a second. I mean, just think how much time we spend each and every week at the altar of the unknown God. How much time we spend in uncertainty and doubt and fear. Uncertain of of what the next step might be. Wondering whether or not we're actually taking the right step. Whether or not we're doing the right thing. Fearful that we might lose some things important to our lives. uh, Some people that are important to our lives. And so we cling on tightly. How much time we spend pulling out our hair, just trying to get life to line up just right. How much sleep we lose at night because we're concerned about our kids, our grandkids, what's going on in their life. So much time that's spent at the altar of the unknown God. So many Mondays 
and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, over and over again, rinse and repeat, because these are the days of the week where life is happening in a sin-filled and broken world. And these are the days of the week where, much like the people in Athens, we go to that altar hoping to find hope and certainty and direction and movement, but finding none of it. That is until Paul steps in and shares what is certain in the midst of uncertainty, what is known in the midst of the unknown. And that's Jesus. Jesus who creates, Jesus who saves, who lives, Jesus who walked with the people in Paul's day, even when they went to places they didn't want to walk to or, or walk in. Jesus who, who gave up everything, including his own life, so that the people in Paul's day would know his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, so that they would know the, the certainty and hope that would come from him. Jesus for them. And honestly, Jesus for you and me as well. Because who Jesus was for the people in Paul's day is still very much who Jesus is for you and me today. Jesus who still creates and saves and lives. Jesus who still walks with you even in the places that you yourself do not want to walk into or walk by. Jesus, who gives up everything for you, even his own life, so that you would know his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness, so that you would have the certainty and hope that comes from him. Jesus, for you, every day of your life, every Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, because these are the days of the week where Jesus is needed in our lives. And these are the days of the week that Jesus comes powerfully into our lives, bringing us certainty, making himself known in the midst of the unknown every day until the end of the age, until the days of the week cease to exist. And you know, until that time comes, we get to go. We get to go and make disciples. We get to go and make disciples for life. We get to, to go and bring certainty in the midst of uncertainty, to, to bring what is known in the midst of unknown. We get to be like Paul and share who Jesus is with the people of this world. That's what you and I get to do. But you know, as we celebrate Lutheran Schools Week, it's also what our Child Development Center has been doing. As I mentioned previously, on National Lutheran Schools Week, we get to celebrate the Lutheran schools across the globe and the work they are doing. But we also get to celebrate our own Lutheran school here on the corner of Northwest Boulevard and Schmidt Lake Road. Right over there, in fact. Just right over there, right? That's what we get to celebrate. And our director, Mary McKnight, will be coming up here in a couple of minutes to share with you some of the amazing things that are happening in the center some of the incredible stories of certainty being brought in the midst of uncertainty. But you know what I get to share with you this morning? is a very simple truth. Beautiful Savior, you should be proud of your Child Development Center. You should be proud of your Child Development Center and what they are doing. Because our kids and our families who come to our center, they're no different from you and me. They experience the same unknowns, the same uncertainty and doubt and fear that come from the unknowns. And our teachers, our staff, our director, our volunteers, 
they all make sure that every kid, every family who comes into our school, they don't leave without knowing who Jesus is. They don't leave without giving them the certainty of Christ at work in their lives, that he loves them and is with them always to the very end of the age. Through every hug, every word spoken, every hand that is held, every mess cleaned up, on every Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and yes, even though we're closed, I know for a fact that it still happens on Saturdays and Sundays too. Because those are the days of the week our kids and families need to know about Jesus. And those are the days of the week our staff, our volunteers, our directors are making him known so that they have the certainty and love that comes from Christ always. And you know, maybe that's how we go about it. You know, Matthew 28, go and make disciples of all nations. That's intimidating. That can be terrifying because we don't know what to do. Or at the very least, we're not like Paul. We can't just walk into the middle of the Areopagus and start talking, right? Maybe that's not who you are. That that's not what you're gifted at. We don't all have to be Pauls, thanks be to God. But you know, through every hug and every word spoken, every hand being held, every mess cleaned up, you make disciples. You share what you know. And you share the certainty that comes from Jesus for you, from Jesus for them. And so God's blessings to you as you go and make disciples for life. God's blessings to you as you go, knowing that wherever you go, you never go alone. Amen.